God has already spoke this morning. As Pastor Karen was moving in the spirit, prophesying, and calling forth things that be not as though they were. And I just sense in my spirit that um, I just want to set precedence in that area. But God has been speaking to me in, in 2016, said, and he was telling me that in 2017, release the mantle of prophecy. You know, the, 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 uh, Pastor, stay slow with me today because I'm just going to just go. Uh, Ephesians um, 4 11 says that, that he's given gifts. Ephesians 4 11 says, I'm giving you uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Those are gifts. And you saw the gift through Pastor Karen ex expressing that gift in prophecy, foretelling. Pastor Karen and I, this is what is 411. Okay, now look at verse 12. Why are these gifts are here? Why did she prophesy? So that you can get under the mantle. And she said, no, we're tired of going around in circles. We're turning northward now. Oh, We've been in this, in this trial, in this situation, in this setback, in this, uh, in, in this, this, this disappointment. And even when you're disappointed with yourself, it's time, this season is over with you being disappointed with yourself. Oh, I don't know who that's for. That gift that went for, it was for the perfecting of the saints. That in other words, for perfecting, right? It can be mature. Mm. Write this down, you know, take this. Psalms 138 verse 8 says, God will perfect the thing concerning you. He will, put, he will mature you in the issues that you've been going with, in, going, dealing with, going around year after year. He's going to grow you up and say, no, you know what? No more. This is a year, this is an eight day, and the eight is the number of new beginning. This is a new year for a new beginning in your way of thinking. And as a man, Proverbs 20, verse 3, 7 says, as a man, what? Yeah. Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man, what? Yeah. So it's time for you to stop thinking what you were thinking in 15, 14, 12, 2016. Yes, this is a new day. This day that you're living on, you have never lived before. Right, right. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Yeah, let that sit down. Amen. It's time to start thinking differently. To perfect the saints for the work of the ministry. Uh-huh. What? Tell your neighbor, say, do something. <laughs> Repeat that to me. 2817. I'm going to do something in the ministry that I didn't do in 2016. To do the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ. Next verse. Till we all come in unity. That's the word right there. You know, I, uh, you know, you know. Help me, Holy Spirit, because I, I, I feel like I just want to burst right now. Amen. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. You know, unity is power. Amen. Jesus says, a house divided. Cannot stand. That's Mark chapter three. You, 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 you cannot even a marriage that's divided cannot stand. Come on now. Even a praise team that is divided cannot stand. Even a, the the parking lot team that is divided cannot stand. 
Even the verses in the church that is divided cannot stand. Even the, the, the sound tech vision, I tech, I tech guys that are divided, they cannot stand. But the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 15 14, 14, let us do everything decent and order. When there's unity, there's order. And when there's order, that's when you bless us. This is a new day. The eighth day, it says, till we all come into the unity of faith. Do you have faith to overcome your circumstances? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, each and every last one of us have different <clears throat> challenges in life. Yes, sir. Do you have the faith to overcome that? You will when you get in line. That's right. In the body of Christ, in unity. And what you do for God's house. Your house is on the Get up again, man. Yes, sir. And the knowledge of, of the Son of God unto the perfected man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. I want to be huh. all that God has commissioned me to be. Huh. The first 50 years of my life, I was doing it my way. I heard you. But the last 50 years of my life, I'm doing it Yahweh. Yeah. And I'm looking for men and women that are, are like-minded, that's in the spirit of unity with me. I don't want to be in, I don't have time to waste with people who are not going the same way I'm going, not talking the same way I'm talking, not doing the same thing I'm doing. Amen. And not into you. I don't care if it's a family member. I don't care if it's a, a friend that you've been friends with for 40 years. They have to be going the same way you're going because there's strength, there's power, and unity. Yeah. And the thief come by what? <laughs> so she was prophesied. So I, 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 I'm just going to just tell you why prophecy is so important. Turn to Ephesians. Uh, I'm sorry, turn to um, listen, this, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19. That word went forth. Now, when Pastor Karen was prophesying to Pastor Debbie and the gentleman in the back, someone else over here, and that was specifically, but corporately for all of us. Whenever the prophecy goes forth, and if, for example, if I was to come in here uh, and, and say, Pastor Karen, and I have a stacks of uh, $100 bills, I say, baby, I'm going to rain this money upon you. <laughs> now, I hope y'all would not just sit there and say, that's her money alone. Some of y'all should be up in there and look, look, this money is raining all over. <laughs> oh, I know, so y'all hope. I know, I know. I know y'all. I know y'all hope. Y'all would do. Lord, forgive me. <laughs> My point is this, is that when that prophecy went forth, you can grab them. Look what 1 Thessalonians uh, 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 5, 19 says, quench not the spirit. How do you quench the spirit? Well, that prophecy is not for me. Oh, look at verse 20. This is how not, you not quench the spirit says, despise not the prophecy. When that word came for you, it, you, you, you have to receive it. You can't despise, oh, you know, that's not gonna happen. You're right, because you spoke it. Because you thought it. And there's power in your words. You know, um, how, many, how many of you know that you guys that you're a citizen, raise your hand. How many of you guys know your constitutional right? Only one out of, so that means six, 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 six. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's sad. But it was, was, no, 
So that means that you are not maximizing your full potential as a citizen of the United States of America. Come on, <laughs> What's the Second Amendment like? My, I, I use my right for my wife when she uh, she said something to me the other day, and, and I really I I, I was perturbed, <laughs> and I wanted to come back with her and just really let her have. I know y'all don't do that because y'all so Jesus friends. Y'all don't do that. But I exercise my Second Amendment right. <laughs> Fifth? What about the fifth? What's the fifth? The right to remain right silent. Right 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 okay. Huh? I'm sorry? The oh, 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 oh. <laughs> now, somebody in here has the right to bear arms. We ain't saying who, but don't y'all try nothing up in here. And are you using that? Here's your spiritual right. When a, when a prophecy goes forth, you have the right to don't despise that. Next verse. Hallelujah. Yes. Prove all things. Hold fast which is good. In other words, now everybody that not, not every one that everybody come prophesying up on you. Yeah. Okay, wait a minute. God, you have even told me about this. Generally, generally, when prophecies come forth, it's just really validating what God has already been speaking to. And I'm sure Pastor Debbie, the brother in the back, and whoever Karen prophesied over. It bear witness what God has been speaking in the spirit. Amen. Maybe five years ago, two years ago, three months ago. And she just brought it back up to remind you. Here's another. First, uh, uh, First Corinthians 14. First Corinthians 14, 1. Now, prophecy. Because God told me to release the spirit of prophecy in the house of 2017. If you don't have a prophet in the house, the people are at a disadvantage. That's why he gave those, those gifts. And there's some people out here, you're in this house, and you've been sitting on that gift. God speaks to you, tell you about things, tell you about people, and since you was a little girl, a little boy, you never told anybody, but every time you see something, you think something, and it always comes to pass you, you never say it. That's a gift that God has given you to use in the body of Christ. Because there's a sister or brother next to you that need to hear an encouraging word, not from you, And it's to be told, every last one of us needs to hear a word of encouragement. Amen. Get behind me, I'm number one. First Corinthians 14, one says, follow after love, charity, love. Some render love, some render charity. Char char so I'm jealous I love I love you. And, and first John says, how can you say you love, just, just say, how can you say you love God, who you haven't seen? And he just says, you, that you do see. He says, you're a liar. And that's why when, when if, 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 you know, uh, uh, Larry, when everybody come in here, if, if I'm standing outside, I see, I'm gonna what? Because I love you. And that same spirit, a spirit of love, because yes, where there's love, there's unity. Where that spirit has to come up, uh, that God would take, and my prayer, that God would take that spirit off of me and put it on the leaders. Because 
Because if the leaders ain't loving, then the church ain't gonna love. And if the pastor ain't loving, then really the church ain't gonna love. But if the pastor is loving, and the people around him is loving, and then the people around him that's going to give the love, and then the people and the, 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 the congregation will go out in the streets and say, you know, you know, come to my church. Why? Because there's love there. I know I need love because I'm Ebenezer Scrooge's granddaughter. And they come here. Do you know sometimes only time a person gets a hug is when they come to church? Amen. Amen. Do you know hug is hugs are so valuable to the human psyche that if you take twin babies and put one in and all you do is change the diapers and, and, and give them food and don't hug them, don't love them, don't do them, babies. Don't do that. But this one you pick up, oh look at you, oh, love you, he's so sweet. Oh. Watch them as they grow up. The one with love have life. They're optimistic. The ones that have no love, they don't trust people, they're not touchy, and they're pessimistic, and they have no faith, and they're true and risen. And I'm not saying that they can't overcome, but what I'm saying that there's so many barriers that they have to burn through. This church is a church of God. This is a prophecy church. It's a fivefold ministry church. We're going to teach you the word, and we're going to love you. Yeah. And at times, we will rebuke you. Oh, yeah. 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 So you try it. And despite, what, what, despite spiritual gifts, desire. <laughs> desire is spiritual gift, but rather that, you may prophesy. That's what she was doing today. The praise team, the worshipers, we're doing a shift now. We're setting the atmosphere where you coming in here. You come in here expecting something. It's like it's like the Indian drum or smoke coming up. Started, started seeing when you pull up in 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 and we're going to close. Hallelujah. Uh, the, 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 I'm speaking on, I'm teaching on first fruits. Oh my God. And you cannot have a fruit. A fruit comes from a seed. And you can't have a seed unless it's been, you have to, been, it has to be given to you. Well, God is a giver of yes, seeds. Sir. He said, I'm, and, and I said 55 11, as, as rain come down, snow from heaven. And, and return out the seed to a soul, I would give seed to a giver. And bread to an eater. The seed come from God. But you cannot have a harvest unless that's a seed. Worship is a part of your seed. Romans 4.17 says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, talking about Abraham. Now, Abraham, 75 years, he was, he couldn't bear. Sarah's, his wife could not bear. Some of you in your circumstances, you're not there. What, you know, I don't know what you're going through. Oppression, depression, pain, sickness, Lack of finance, lack of a job, lack of a mate. Lack of the word of God. I don't know what it is. Fix it. Your business, stop being fruitful. God 
understand, as in the script, he's talking to Abraham. Now, Abraham, now whatever your circumstance is, I want you to compare it to Abraham's circumstance. And Hebrews 13, they said, Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. So what he did for Abraham with his impossible circumstances, maybe just perhaps he can do for your circumstances. Hello. Man. I, I don't know, maybe your circumstances may be a little harder than Abraham. Well, I'm 65 right now, so another 10 years from now, I'll be 75. I hate to even think about that, but anyway. Yeah, keep it y'all catch up with me. But watch this. Elder, Sarah Annette, I mean, I'm not gonna prophesy. Well. <laughs> Chief, I got another 10 years before I get ready to get a TV. So get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. How impossible is that? I mean, seriously. How impossible? Babysit me 10 years from now. <laughs> Come on. This is not a fairy tale, guys. It's, I want to get you to, to be in the now. Hebrews 11 1 said, What? Now I pray. Get it, say, get in the now. How's it now? Three to five seconds. If you're out of five seconds in your thinking, you're out of the now. Now I pray. Is the substance of things. You don't see it in that. Abraham could not see. <laughs> Look at this. As it's written, I have made you a father of nations. See, when God speaks something, when God speaks something, it's not like you and I. In Numbers 23 19 said, God is not a man that he shall lie. God is not a man. The man would lie. I don't. Uh -oh. Look at the holy pastor Fred. This is what I want you guys to know. As a man, I will lie. And don't look at me like you're so holy, because you will lie to me. Yes, sir. I'm tired of being superstitious in, in your, 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 your faith. But, but if we do fall, we have an advocate. Okay. His name is Jesus, hey. John 5. Hey. John 3, Jesus. Hey. And, and he's a, he's a an advocate in the word it means in, in, in the first time, it means that we have a lawyer. We have a lawyer that has defended Jesus. I mean, uh, Larry, Larry, Larry Parker had nothing on him. I'll fight for you. No, he has nothing on him. <laughs> but what, watch this, Larry. <laughs> Arena, watch this. His father, our defense attorney, father, is the judge. Some of you still going to be like it. It's a conflict of interest. The judge should be kicked off the case. But the judge said, no, I'm going to try this case. And guess what? Now you. The verdict, when the verdict come in, 1 Corinthians 15, 57, but thanks be unto God. God, the victory. Man, this thing is set up. So let me just sit. Whatever you're going, I'm trying to build somebody's face up. It's painful yes. right now. I'm no. I just sense it in my spirit. Somebody's came here. You came here. Yes. Amen. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickens the dead. And call those things which be not as though they were. Huh. What was dead? Huh. Sarah's womb to give birth. Oh. Abraham going to give seed was dead. Was dead in your life. Huh. What needs huh. to what do you need to give birth? Come on. God says, I am the same. Write this down. Malachi 3, 6. I am the Lord God. I change not. Come on. What he doesn't change? 
Psalms 119, verse 89. My words are forever settled in heaven. Once I speak it over you, I take it. Once I speak it over you, it's your job to receive it. Receive it. Believe it. Glory. James, watch this. Before him, he believed. Before Abraham believed God. Before you believe God today, before you came in, how do you believe that this eight days is a new beginning for you? My wife and I drove to Atlanta, Georgia, just to get away. I can call up, she can validate everything I'm going to say. 
She came and sat in my chair over about 14 years ago, 15 years ago. The church is only 13 years. Bombed completely out. <laughs> not, not as pastor Fred, not then, it was just Fred. What, what are we going to do? What, what, what's, what's going on? <laughs> you won't believe me if I tell you. I just tell me. I'm pregnant. You what? <laughs> and God had me to, see, I didn't know the ministry was getting ready to be started. God had me to prophesy Glory. while she was in my chair Glory. that this boy, and I, I didn't know what it was, that it came out to be a boy, Glory. will bring you so much joy. Yes. And God will use him for the further kingdom of God. Amen. And God is doing that. Amen. The prophecy has to come forth. Just let me get through this verse. Amen. Who will against hope believe in hope? That he may become the father of many nations, according to that which was. See, what is God speaking to you today? The, the prophecy, the praise and worship. I know he was speaking to you. Against all the trials and the situation that you're going through, God is trying to get you to say, Hello, my daughter, my son. I am your redeemer. I'm your great reward. Let me come into your house. Uh, let me full shame your room, your house. Is it full shame? I get it right. On, on sway your house. Let me rearrange your furniture so that they the energy can come. Like they say, the world said the energy can come. Yeah, you, you, you. Okay. That's man. But Holy Spirit said, let me let me come in and clean up some some, some areas that uh, fix some things that are broken in your house. Some, yeah. some plumbing, some light. Let me turn the light green. You've been doing a 40 watt. Let me put a 100 watt book yeah. so you can see things.
seven days in a week and start to do But not only than that, God destroyed this earth by water. The great flood, it rained 40 days and 40 nights all over the world. And God destroyed the whole earth. Every living creature, but except Noah, Mrs. Noah, Job, Noah had three sons and they had five each. Eight is a number of new beginning. God started this whole world all over again with his eight sons. This is the eighth day. I'm prophesying now. New beginnings in your finances. New beginnings in your relationships. New beginning in your health. New beginning in your marriage. New beginning in your business. New beginning in your relationship with your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren. New beginning in this nation, oh God. I pray, Father, for the peace of Jerusalem. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that those who are came in today, feeling discouraged, you barely made it in today. God says, my sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. You heard the voice of God say, come in. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray Genesis 50, 20 over that person. Joseph said well, to his brothers, but you meant for bad. God, you turned it around for my good. I pray some 23 of you, you may have some scoffers, some enemies. They have laughed at you. Family members, friends, co-workers. I pray. Psalms 23, verse 5. He will prepare a table in the presence of your enemies. He will anoint your head with oil. I decree in 2017 that your cup will be running over. There will be abundance over you in every area of your life. I speak it over you now. There may be one person here that has not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That means that you don't know where you will spend eternity. If you were to die today, God forbid, you don't know where you will go. What minute you think, oh, I'll go to heaven. And then the next minute, I'll go to hell. Oh, I'm not sure. God says, I brought you here today to be sure. Tomorrow is not promised. Yesterday morning in Orlando, Florida, people got up, they brushed their teeth, they hurried to the airport to catch their next plane. But what they didn't know, the next plane that they would take would be into eternity. God forbid you would take a walk out of this building and take a step into eternity. Will you, which eternity will you be? Will it be heaven or will it be hell? If you're not sure, I want everyone, everyone to repeat after me. Because there may be just be one person that the enemy say you're the only one. And you want to put a fear back on you. The shame. Paul says in Romans 175, not the shame by the gospel. For his power to salvation to the Jew first and then the Greek. Me, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need a savior. I believe that you were born of a virgin and you died on Calvary and you were buried in the grave. And after three days, God the Father raised you from the dead. Now come into my life. Thank you. 
saved. If you really got your faith around that for the very first time, if you really understand that, you've been going back and forth in your faith. How about saved or not saved? You're saved by the confession of your mouth and believing in your heart that Jesus Christ died. If you confess that and believe that for the first time, don't worry about your name. It's the first time. First time. First time. Is it the first time? And he's got one. Is that another one? Come on. 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 Stop in heaven and rejoice for